Hey Denon High School, this is Mr. Aiden, and this is Primary Topics of Equilibrium Part 2. Uh, if you're a visiting teacher or you're a student, just keep in mind this is copyrighted material by Robert Aiden back in 2010, and all applicable copyright laws apply. Last time when we started talking about primary topics, uh, we, we, we explained that there's three different things that we need to, to take a look at with primary topics, and the first one is, of course, the equilibrium expression. We have to know how to write an equilibrium expression, and that came from Part 1. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at this time calculating concentration given K, and of course when you're given K, or when you're given concentration, sorry, you're, you can calculate the K. Now, we're going to be zeroing in on the second one for part two, which is calculating concentration when we're given K. And by the end of the week, you want to be an expert at being able to calculate concentration when you're given K. Let's start with this weak acid problem. It's hydrofluoric acid, and you can see it's dissociating, and it's coming to equilibrium. And you can tell it's a weak acid problem because do you see the Ka, the Ka, which they have given you? Now, the first thing you want to do before anything is, of course, for part A, being able to write an equilibrium expression. Being able to write Ka is equal to, you put your products on the top, H3O+, plus, you put F minus, because that's what your conjugate base is, and on the bottom you put HF. And so this is part A. It already gives you a few points, and, and we're already on to part B. Part B, we're going to start doing some calculations, and uh, of course, you see that they have given us K. So you're going to calculate, of course, concentration. Okay? And so KA, we know what K is, it's 6.8 times 10 to negative fourth. Now the thing about equilibrium is, They've given us 0.4 molar of HF initially. There's 0 0.40 molar of this guy right here. Now he starts to dissociate, and he's only going to dissociate a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. So actually it dissociates and, and becomes 0.4 minus some X value. You, he's actually going to go down in value because this concentration has to go down in order for your products to go up. Your products start at zero, and, and when they start at zero, they're going to be adding an x. And this guy's going to start at zero molar, and we're going to add x. Now, if you think about it, if they started at zero, and you're adding x, now why is it x? Because for every one mole that we lose of HF, we're going to gain a mole of H3O+. Plus. For every one mole we lose of HF, we're going to gain a mole of F-. minus. So really, we're just gaining x, and we're gaining x. Now, keep in mind about these problems, these dissociation problems. It's dissociating so very, very little. This x is going to be so, so, so small that you see the 0.4 minus x. This x is so small, it really doesn't even matter. It's still pretty much going to be 0.4. Which gives us, on the top we have x squared, and on the bottom we have 0.4. And we can, we can do our algebra here. We multiply by 0.4, and we end up getting 2.7, 2 times 10 to the negative 4. And that's equal to our x squared. What do we do? We square root to find out what just x is, and x ends up being 0.16 molar, because it's a concentration. Now take a look at what x is. x is the H3O plus concentration. It's also the same as the F minus concentration. So in this question, it's asking you for the H3O plus concentration. That's 0.16 molar. If they ask you for the F minus concentration, guess what it is? 0.16 molar. Do you see how the 0 0.40 molar didn't go down by a whole lot because the Ka was so small? And we can assume that it's still 0.4. That is calculating concentration given K. Um, let me show you a different type of problem. Let's, let's take a look at a KSP problem, and this is silver chromate that's dissociating. The first thing we want to do, of course, is come up with our equilibrium expression. KSP is equal to, and remember, we can almost cross out the solid because he, solids don't go in our KSP expression. We're going to get AG plus squared, and we're going to get CRO4, the chromate ion, negative 2. This is never, ever, ever different, and that's the first thing you want to come up with. Now, if you take a look for part B, we know what KSP is, don't we? They gave us K. It's 1.2 times 10 to negative 12, which means we're going to be solving for a concentration. Now, just think about it. For every 
one mole that the chromate comes uh, increases, for every one mole that the chromate increases, the silver is increasing two moles. Why? Because it's a one to two ratio. So if we're going to put an x in for one mole of x, we have to put 2x in for the silver. Why? Because for every one mole the chromate's increasing, the silver's increasing two moles, two times whatever the, the chromate is. We keep the squared because that is our equilibrium expression. Now we have to do some algebra. What is 2x squared? It's actually 4x squared. We have to make sure we understand that. That squared distributes to everything inside those parentheses. So we have 4x squared times another x, which is 4x cubed, 4x cubed. And now, let's take a look at our algebra here. The first thing we have to do is divide by 4, so we get 3.0 times 10 to negative 13. And try this in your calculator along with me. Now we're going to cube root it, we're going to cube root it to just find out what x is equal to, and we end up getting 6.7 times 10 to negative fifth molar. Now think about it, what is x? X is actually the chromate ion. Take a look at up and up in your uh, in your equilibrium expression. X is equal to the chromate ion, which means what is the silver? Silver is not x. It's two times x. It's 1.3 times 10 to negative 4. And this is your silver concentration, and that's what we were looking for: our silver concentration in moles per liter. That's a KSP expression. They look exactly the same every single time. The last thing, I'm, I'm going to show you a, a weak base problem, this KB problem. This is ammonia. The first thing, of course, we have to do is come up with our equilibrium expression. KB is equal to, and we're on, up the top, we're going to put our conjugate acid. We're going to put our conjugate base, the hydroxide, all over our concentration of ammonia. This is exactly the same as a um, weak acid problem, except it's a weak base. We know at the end we're going to have to do one more step. We're going to have to subtract from 14, won't we? Okay? And because we're trying to find our pH, guys, let's keep in mind pH is the same as concentration, isn't it? We know what the K is. K is 1.8 times 10 to negative fifth, and ding, 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 ding. When they give us the K, we're trying to find concentration. They've given us the ammonia. Where do we put that? On the bottom, 0 0.20. What do we put on the top is x times x, which is x squared. It's an x squared problem. And we can easily do our algebra here, can't we? We multiply by 0.2, the k by 0.2, and then we square root. And that gives us what x is. And you can see I will start skipping over a few algebraic steps because you have to know how to do it. If the x is equal to 0 0.0019, that's equal to not only my ammonium, my conjugate acid, but it's also equal to, oops, sorry about that, it's also equal to my hydroxide, hydroxide as well. So when they ask me for the pH, what am I going to do? My pOH is equal to my negative log of my hydroxide, okay? My negative log of, what is my hydroxide? It is 0 0.0019 molar, okay? And I end up finding my pOH. My pOH ends up being 2.72. So how do I find my pH? My pH is equal to 14 minus my pOH because it's a weak base and we end up getting a pH of 11.28 which proves it is a weak base. That is our calculating concentration given K. If we're doing KC problems, take a look. You got that X squared on the top, you got that concentration on the bottom, you find for your X. Same th exact thing for your Ka. Same exact thing for your Kb, except you're going to subtract from 14 if you're trying to find the pH. And the Ksp is a little bit different. We have to put in our molar ratios inside our brackets and make sure we distribute. Hope this helped, guys. By the end of next week, you want to be masters, masters at calculating concentration when you're given K. See you guys.